Oh, and you're a law professor, right? Yes. And I'm looking at your bookcases, and you have so many science books, so many neuroscience books. You got these brains here as knickknacks. Right. What, 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 what is this combination? Everything law does at some level is about changing behavior and learning about the brain and learning about biology and how people think and perceive and act is all part of the, the grand mission of figuring out how to make them behave better. Are there things that need to change based on what we now know right. about the brain? Right. Many people believe that we can, uh, through brain scanning and, and other techniques, learn something meaningful mm -hmm. about the degree of this person's culpability. And and there I think we, we are making progress, not in not in answering the hard question of how culpable is this person, mm -hmm. but of adding to the, the, to the dimension or adding to the weight of other information that we're getting about this person's behavior. We would never do a brain scan and say, wow, notwithstanding the fact that this guy is behaving completely normally, say all his friends and coworkers, the brain scan says he's insane, so I guess he's insane. We'd mm -hmm. never say that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if we had a lot of reason to believe that for a long time he had been claiming he was hearing voices and co-workers say that he's taken a turn for the worse and seems to be behaving in a very aberrational way. If we then also have a brain scan that shows some area of the brain is significantly impeded in its structure, we might say these two things together add up to more than either of them individually and we might feel a little bit more comfortable thinking, say at a sentencing phase, that he's perhaps not insane, but also not as culpable as the average person. You have, uh, which, um, on one side, science trying to understand right. humanity. Right. And on the other side, the justice system understanding it the best it can, right. but having to take action. Right. And you're bringing these two together in, in scholarly disciplines. Right. What does the science side need to be, contribute to the law side and vice versa? The one thing that both disciplines have going for them is that they're incredibly precise. Mm -hmm. And so if they can figure out the common language, and we've been working for years now to build bridges from both directions that will meet in the middle and, and, and work in the middle, it can be done, but it, it, takes, it takes time. Uh, are there, do yeah. they have d different ways of approaching the work, different ways of thinking, of, of, of coming right. to conclusions? And right. That kind of thing? Take, for example, the bright line rule about the age of majority. It's just administratively easier to say, if you're past your 18th birthday, we're going to treat you this way, yeah. and if you're less, yeah. we're going to treat you that way. That may not be fair. But, but suppose that, that, that we were able to come uh, and say, okay, we can age this person plus or minus three years. Yeah. Therefore, legal system, when you get somebody who's 14 but has the brain of a 19-year-old, you should treat this guy as an adult. And if you get a 19-year-old who's got a brain that looks more like a 14-year-old, you should treat him as, as a juvenile. Mm. For now, the legal system is going to say, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We're not interested yeah. because there is just too much... Uh, uh, winnowing effect of our resources. It sounds like once you start a thing like right. that, you would have to give everybody exactly. a, a, an FMRI. Right. So the legal system is trying to do substantive justice while procedurally trying to have rules that are workable for all. So that we don't just say that rich kids who can get an fMRI, yeah. they get to be treated yeah. one way, and poor kids who can't get an fMRI, we're going to just treat them as adults. Yeah. Is, is there resistance on the part of the justice system? Do, do, they, do they say, wait, wait, we're doing okay. We've been doing okay for hundreds of years. Don't, don't confuse us. Yes, there, there is some resistance that, that would be articulated just, just that way. There, there are two sides to these swords, and, and figuring out how to wield it in a way that's responsible and logical and helpful and doesn't cut too many hands off uh, in the process is, is, a, is a challenging thing. But I think the, the force of momentum here is clearly we're uncovering truths about the brain. We just don't know yet where all of those truths are going to lead. <laughs>